Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I have this uh, Cub Cadet 50 inch RZT zero turn. It says time saver on there, and I think that's like Toro's logo. But regardless, uh, this little tractor, it's a homeowner unit, we have a bad right side hydro, and what's happening is when you move the right arm to go forward, when the unit is hot, it whines and it doesn't want to move, especially if you're going uphill. Um, so once the oil in there gets hot, you start having transmission issues. I've already removed the transmission and for today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix this thing without buying any parts. So uh, it should be a valuable video for you if you're going to be doing a transmission just like this one. Here's your main components. You have the center section, you have a pump, and you also have a wheel motor, so the pumps and wheel motors. And uh, what we've done in this video is we've resurfaced this center section on both sides. We'll show you how to do that. And we we'd also have uh, polished the bottoms of the wheel motor and pumps. So all this information will be available in this video and there will also be links to the products and tools that I used for this project in the description. Okay guys, I'm back. I'm ready to inspect this thing. So <clears throat> this here is the motor. There's pistons in here. They should all move up and down. They shouldn't be scratched up at all. And you want to check if they wobble at all. That would indicate that there's some wear. These look good. So what we're going to do is flip these over. There's springs in there like that. And it's not particularly important if you get them out of order. It's not really going to affect anything. It doesn't have to be that precise. Now on the bottom of this, generally there becomes some wear. So what we're going to do is wet sand that rather than buying new. So to do this, I'm starting out with 400 grit. And uh, I ordered this whole stack of uh, different sandpaper, different grits. It goes up to like 5,000 grit or something. And we're going to squirt a little oil on here. And this is 400. And we're going to, on a flat surface, just keep this moving in, uh, in small circles. It's already perfectly flat and I'm using a cast iron table to sand it. Pick it up every once in a while that helps distribute the oil when wet sanding. So that's 400. Here's 600. Last one we're doing is a thousand. That's it. Three minutes, we're up to a thousand grit. I'll clean that off and show it to you. Just a little brake parts cleaner. I'm gonna blow it out with compressed air, re-oil it, put all the pistons in. But 
I don't know if you could see it, but that's a really nice polished shine. And that's with the thousand grit. If you wanted to go higher, you could. So you want to do that with both the pump and the motor. Because what happens is you get little grooves between these holes and that's where your fluid leaks and you lose pressure and your hydraulics don't work. Alright guys, this is a look at the center section from the transmission. One side the motor, the other side is where the pump goes. And what happens is you get very fine grooving. It almost looks like a record. And you can just barely feel these grooves with your fingernails. And what that does is between these openings, that allows the fluid to leak out and you lose pressure. So what we're going to do is resurface these. And you can see this is actually even in a little worse shape here. So uh, I'm going to show you how to hone this thing down and uh, fix this thing up for only a couple bucks for sandpaper. So I'm going to be using a honing block for uh, honing chisels, get them nice and sharp. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to actually wrap it with sandpaper. Okay, and we're going to start out with 400 grit. And we're going to wet sand it, so I'll be putting oil on it. I have this clamped in the vise. And all we're doing is we're following the profile that exists. I just want to clean off the sanding block. I want that to be as flat as possible. This is our 400 grit. We're going to set it on there. And I can't sand in a circle, but we can go back and forth fairly simply. Just apply good pressure and take your time. You're barely taking off any material. See already that got out most of it. We want to go a little longer with the 400 grit because that's what's going to remove the most material and then it's a matter of just sanding it up to one or two thousand. I'll probably go to two thousand so that should give it a nice shine. Just be patient. Every now and then you want to take a look at it and see if you got the grooves out. And these aren't quite out. You can still see a little bit of grooving here. And there's a little bit down in this section. So we need to go more. That's all there is to it. I'm just going to keep working this with this 400 until those grooves come out. So this is 400 grit. And I've now got all the grooves out. You can see there's a little bit of pitting, and that's just from holes in the casting. They were there, but the grooves are out, and now what I'm going to do is 600 and 1,000, and then I'll bring you back and show you the finish. I might even go up to 2,000. Okay, guys, I took it down to 2,000 grit, and the reason I went to 2,000 is... It only took an extra literally like two minutes and with a little bit of uh, brake clean you can see how how nice the, the finish gets. Very nice and smooth looking. Like I said there is a little pitting 
but that's not going to cause a problem. That's just the way the casting actually was. See, there's pitting out over here. There's pitting all over this thing, actually. But the surface is nice and smooth. Okay, now we're on to the other side. I haven't done anything yet, but you can kind of see the grooving. The hard part about this is you got to be able to get in here. So, with the block I was using, I can just about get everything I, I, I need to get. So that'll take us, let me zoom you out a little bit. That'll get us in there pretty tight and we're gonna have to carefully kind of work in the corner a little bit. And I don't think there's actually too much wear on that very outside edge, but we're gonna do our best to smooth that out. So we're gonna start again with 400. So we're starting with 320. I've oiled this up. We're gonna get in there. Once you get that block on there, set that sandpaper, get it nice and flat against that honing block. And we're just gonna start by going across on a little bit of an angle. See how I can just sort of follow that profile? Now if you had a milling machine, you could mill that away. But I think I can get it by hand here pretty well without having to mill it. Just be patient, take your time, try not to gouge anything. You're just following that profile. Not really pushing too hard. I'm letting the weight of the block do most of the work. See how I can get right in there and go right around that corner. Trying to go a little bit circular if possible. A little bit of patience will go a long way. You can order this part, but then you're going to have to wait about four days till you get it, and you'll have a tractor in your way. If you hone these out yourself, you can jack that tractor up, take apart the transmission, perform all the work on it, put it all back together. It's going to end up saving time and money because I still have that tractor hanging. Should have this transmission in by the end of the day here for sure. It's already uh, 1.30. And you can see we got to go much deeper here. It's even more obvious where the problems are now that I clean that up a little bit. So that's our 400 grit and you can see where the problems are. Right here that's our main problem. There's a little bit of gouging out here little bit there so uh, we just need to go longer with the 400 alright guys I've worked it up I'm going from 1000 grit to 2000 grit so this is my final pass and I just want to show you what type of sanding motion I'm doing on this thing so you can go in a circle and you can get your corner right in there just like that now you remember how beat up it looked 
I may have spent probably about 15 minutes on this side. It's a little bit more difficult. Alright, we'll take a look at that. And you can see that's that's beautiful. There's no indication of any grooves in there. There's just dirt on it. And there's also a filter on here that has some magnets. So we're going to have to use some parts cleaner. You can see that there's metal on there and that's being picked up from whatever's chipped off and worn inside here. I think there's uh, two magnets in here and there's also these uh, uh, these are like pop-off valves so if you hit something with the mower um, it'll release the pressure um, so we'll, we'll open them up inspect that clean everything and uh, this part is good to go so we'll get it all cleaned up so I cleaned everything in water degreased it cleaned off the magnet open this filter check these uh, check the balls and they're good so we'll put the filter cover on and we'll give you guys a final look you can see these look nice and smooth now when they come from the factory they actually have a more of like a polished look this is kind of a flat finish but it's very smooth and it's going to do the job for us Here's your main components. You have the center section, you have a pump, and you also have a wheel motor, so the pumps and wheel motors. And uh, what we've done in this video is we've resurfaced this center section on both sides. We'll show you how to do that. And we we'd also have uh, polished the bottoms of the wheel motor and pumps. Alright guys, got everything wrapped up. I cleaned off the surface, put a little brake clean on it. Um, this is a new product I've been using. It's this uh, Permatex Aviation Forma Gasket. Um, it's really good. It works kind of, I've been using it like Teflon tape on uh, pneumatic fittings. And you're supposed to put it on before you add a gasket. It's a little bit sticky. You could put it on a light coat on both sides of a gasket. So I'm just putting it on here and then I'm going to finish this up with the uh, Permatex, the right stuff. I really like this right stuff because you don't have to wait for it to dry. You can put it right on there and add your oil and you're good to go. So this is just a little added protection. I'm going to do each case like this. Just a light coat, and then we'll go with the uh, uh, the right stuff. So I'll do each side just like that. So I have that aviation gasket on there. I added a little bit of oil before we put oil in it. And <clears throat> this is the other side. Looks like it goes on this way. And you can see I have that aviation gasket on there, just enough to give it a little bit of tack. And we'll line it up, and there are some alignment dowels, which we should be able to locate. Well, they usually don't go on that easy. Alright, that looks good. I'm going to look up the torque spec. I'm just going to get the bolt started, wait about 10 minutes, and then that should be enough time to get them snugged down. So I think somewhere between 120 and 140 inch pounds will be fine. I just topped off the oil I'm about a half inch from the top of the case. And I used uh, 20W50 synthetic. 
I want to use a synthetic oil because it's not really going to be changed. These things aren't too easy to change the oil. You got to drop the transmission. All right, guys. So I got the transmission back in. Both the hydros are released, and I've got the wheels jacked up off the ground. I'm going to get this started, and uh, we're going to purge the hydros a little bit. And we're still going to have to make a forward and reverse tracking adjustment, but we want to make sure it runs, get the air out of it, and that. I just got done adjusting the tracking. I didn't film it. If you're interested in that, I do have videos on how to adjust the tracking on these zero turns. What I want to do now is just take it out, make sure it drives, and we're going to try and pull some hills. Alright guys, we're going to take a look at it on a hill. Before this tractor would barely run on a flat. It's not whining, it seems to be running good. And this is a pretty steep hill. So we'll run on this a little bit. So there you have it guys, you can see it's running really nice, I didn't notice any issues with it. I'll have to cut a couple acres with it and see how it does, but um, generally those hills are, are, you know, if you cut them for a little bit, you'll, you'll see that there's an issue, if there's an issue. So uh, this mower still needs some work. We, uh, we, the guy has it set up for a bag, but the bag doesn't fit because the deck's bent. And uh, I just noticed we're missing a wheel too. So I got to weld the wheel on there. And then the other side, that, that weld's cracked. This is bent. This, this machine has higher hours, the hour meter's busted. But looking at it, I would probably guess at least 500. And uh, it's got a Kawasaki. This is by far the best engine um, that you can run on these things. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go through and get that done. I also have uh, this one here. We're putting a new pump in. Um, I just got the uh, parts ordered from Pro Parts Direct. 
and uh, they're coming in. So once I get them, I got to put a new pump in this one and, and drain out the wheel motor. So if you're not a subscriber, guys, you want to make sure you subscribe, catch all these videos. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm always here to answer questions. So thanks for watching. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Seems like a, a pretty cheap repair to me, and it's going to last a long time, and uh, really does sound good. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.